Hi, I'm Pauline. Um, I've been living on my houseboat now on and off for about four years. It's my happy place. I wouldn't be anywhere else. <laughs> It's got full solar, um, it's got a water maker. The only thing I have to do is go over and buy a bottle of gas every couple of weeks and um, empty the tanks out and fill up with petrol. And here's my little shipmates, my first mate. i got four little dogs on here. Chloe, Maggie, Muffin and Millie. And then we've got some little puppies which I breed. They're cavoodles. Why do I live on a houseboat? Um, I bought the houseboat about five years ago and I was working as a medical receptionist uh, and my sister actually committed suicide and she had MS. So I understand why she did it, but it still was pretty uh, shocking. And so I sold up, sold my house, retired, and I had the houseboat already and I just moved up here and it sort of never left. Well, up and down. My son lives close by, so I often go and stay there, so I'm not on here full time. Um, my sister and I went up to Maruchi Waters and to look at a house that was for sale. And I had a look at it and, I, and then my sister said, well, what next, you know? And I'd be moving away from my family and I thought, yeah. So anyway, I went back home. And um, a friend showed me a photo of this boat. I said, that's got my name on it. That ticks all the boxes. Because the house up at Marucci was uh, like on a um, canal. Ch -ch canal, And um, it had water all around it and it had a pool. But it was an old house. And I thought, hmm. There was just something about it that wasn't quite right. And, of course, I didn't have the money for it. <laughs> so, oh, by the way. And then um, when I saw the boat, I thought, that ticks all the boxes. It's on the water. It's freedom. It's just what I need. Yeah. So I already had it. Well, here's the steering, <laughs> the helm. I don't know all the right turns. I've got a water maker here. Uh, well, it's very easy. Just turning on the, the booster, turn on the main pump, and then you run it up to, this has to come up to 600, I haven't got my glasses on, and it should, once the bubbles come up, I don't know all the technical terms, but uh, it's a Watermakers Australia product, and once these bubbles come up, then I'll move it, move it up to here, and that means it's making 160 litres of water uh, an hour. So I have enough wash, enough water on there to do washing, um, to have my bath, which I love. There you go, there you go, the bubbles now. So I just move that up to 800. And that sits there for, until I turn it off. Or until it gets a bit of a blockage, then I've got to clean out the filters. And all the filters and the motors are under, in that hatch there, which I'm, pretty good at doing now <laughs> and I just keep that topped up every day so that's actually making the river water into fresh water fresher than what you actually drink out of your tap um, on my phone I have a little app so that will tell me how much water a very useful little device to buy this boat originally I paid about 60000 but I have put a lot more of that than that into it. I've probably put a couple of thousand, hundred thousand into it, you know, with all the upgrades and maintenance and everything. But then to to maintain it, you've only got your mooring fees, which is seven or eight hundred dollars. Um, you've got your anti fouling of your boat, which is every eighteen months, twelve months if you're not using it, but eighteen months if you're using the boat, and that can be anywhere upwards of about four thousand because you've got to have it lifted out of the water. So you've got that. Then you've got the maintenance of your mooring um, line. Um, someone comes around every year and uh, cleans it and makes sure it's safe. And then where I park my boat, it costs me $70 a week. Um, so it's like having a garage in town or... 
but it's handy because then you're not getting booked if you park on the wharves so. or <laughs> and my kitchen I've got the full-sized oven um, it's gas one of the first days that I was on the boat I didn't have screens on the window so I was standing here fishing out of the window and I caught a whim reeled it in um, cleaned it up straight into the pan and ate it for dinner <laughs> That was absolutely so much fun. Yeah, little bits of excuse the mess. And then I've got um, under here, under where these dogs are sleeping, there's... Come on, guys. Keep her the food. Come on. So you use every little spot you've got to, to hide things in. And then obviously my fridge is stuffed with things, but I go up every couple of days, up to Coles. Um, yeah, uh, that's gas as well. Um, I, I could turn it over to solar, but I haven't been going to yet. I don't want to run out. So <laughs> um, because it's actually, um, if I was going to do that, I'd need a 240 volt um, one, not, a, not one of these three-way things that use up a lot of electricity so yeah the microwave works um, I've got the lights are on 12 volt and the um, obviously the power is 240 so here's the batteries of the power don't ask me technical terms <laughs> and then I've got in here is two large batteries and all those lights say that it's full I've got eight panels, so it's like a house. Yeah. And the, oh, and there's, then there's a little thing here that I can read as to how much um, solar I'm making and how much I'm using. So that's handy. What are some of the benefits of lifestyle for me? Um, the freedom. It's like my retirement village. It's like, I mean, you couldn't get a better retirement home than this, could you? Like, my kids all think I'm crazy, <laughs> but, well, no, they don't all think I'm crazy, but, um, and they sort of think, oh, there's going to come a time where, you know, but I can't imagine there'll be a time where I can't be here. I think I'd rather jump overboard and <laughs> swim away. <laughs> Laundry, full-size washing machine, dryer, which I hardly ever use because of the wind up here, so, you know, the drying under there. There's my little bath, which I love, <laughs> over the shower, under the shower. Mm. Uh, it flushes, it's a, a proper toilet and it goes into the black tank and then I empty the black tank at the marina. Mm. And then my little boudoir. I've got lots of storage under here, lift up the mattress, I won't do it because it's an absolute mess. <laughs> Second bedroom, this will be a, another puppy birthing. I had my grandchildren up here on the weekend and um, they stayed, they had the uh, swags all up on the top deck. So there was three of them up there and the others were all around here. And they had so much fun jumping off the top deck. So, yeah. Um, I had five of my 17 grandchildren, so. So this is the mat we had out for the last um, oh, a few weeks during Christmas and the kids and the dogs just absolutely loved it. It's like a, it was like a little playground for them. So normally up here, this is my happy spot. <laughs> uh, normally I've got a table and chairs and um, a lounge here. Uh, but we've just emptied it out to re-glass and fix up, repaint and do everything here. And the same, that's the sun deck up there. Oh, and there's a barbecue normally over there too. Lots of little kayaks, lots of things for the kids to do. Well, there used to be the challenge of no water. If, if I'd use up all the water and I'd have to take, get someone, because I wasn't driving at that stage, and I'd have to get someone to take the boat over to fill up with the water. But now that I've got the water maker, it's amazing. I just top it up all every day. Um, and it's fresher than tap water. They reckon it's you know better than town water. 
no, nothing added to it. You've got to be very sure-footed. You've got to really uh, be mindful of what you're doing. Um, one day I came down the step ladder and I thought I was on the bottom step, but I was on the second step. And so, of course, when you go to stand down and I fell, but I was okay. But, you know, a fall like that could wreck your whole lifestyle, I suppose. So I'm, I'm very careful. Another challenge probably would be if you did get really sick, you know, but there's always a way around it. There's no use thinking what if or... I love it, yeah. But, I, yeah, I'm not sure that we thought that through properly because if one of them goes out, it's going to be a major, major uh, fix if, if one goes. I don't know how. Anyway, we'll face that when it happens. <laughs> yeah, storage. Yeah, but even in the wintertime, in the cold, in the wind, it's still beautiful. It's, there's nothing I don't like about it. Except the mosquitoes. They like me too much. Well, I've, I've just rebuilt the, um, the back, the um, swim board, taken the old one off, which was falling off, and I've put two new um, uh, Yamaha motors on, 60 horsepower, and we took it out the other day for Australia Day, went up the river, and um, went to a spot where they had um, local music, singing and that and it was just so nice you know and the, and the boat just went beautifully i've just had the gas hot water system redone um and the gas man signed on off signed off on it the other day um so that'll be right till i forever <laughs> and you put the gas unit outside the um you can see it on the wall out there so now you don't smell gas inside if ever there is a tiny so this is a little hatch which I'm learning to go in and out of all the time and if you look directly there there's the filters and over that way is the motor. So there are your filters that I change regularly probably every couple of weeks and they're disposable they're about a dollar each and that's the motor and the bilge pumps and everything that keeps the boat dry. Do it. Just Nike, do it. <laughs> oh, look, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I'll, I would tell anybody to do it. But then it wouldn't be so special. So, shh, no, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd have to pick the spot. And, um, yeah. yeah, just make sure. Boats do cost a bit, you know. Um, so just make sure you're financially okay to do it. The wet weather can be a bit tiresome at times because you've got to transport your groceries from, you know, using a tender. Um, that was the best thing I ever bought. It's a, um, a polycraft walkthrough, walk through, and um, it's so easy to work. They're indestructible. I think that's about my fourth tender. And I've only been here four years. <laughs> But others help me wreck the other ones. <laughs> but yeah, get yourself a good tender. Um, make sure your houseboat's big enough. I'd recommend anybody get a water maker and I'd recommend anybody put solar panels on because I don't run out of power and I don't run out of water now. Being an older solo woman, like anything, you can, you can get a little bit lonely. But I have my dogs, I have my lifestyle, I have... I keep busy. Life is what you make it. So I wished I'd started, I wished I'd done this 20 years ago. That, that's my one wish. But then it wouldn't be so special now, I suppose. So, and, um, you know, my sons, some of them think, wow, you know, mum. <laughs> and I'm forever learning. So I'm never going to get Alzheimer's. I don't think. I used, I learnt to dance, well, was learning to dance, um, rock and roll and ballroom and that, and I loved it. And I used to think I had to go out and dance. But you know what? You can turn the music on and you can dance to, well, nobody's watching on your boat. You can play your music, you can have your champagne, you can do whatever you like, and you can actually be happy in that moment. You know, I've learnt that. Be happy, and if you're wanting to make other people happy, 
it, it comes back to you. So if you're generous, it will come back to you. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. Also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.